Okay, today we're going to talk about something called perspective. What is perspective? Well, let's explain it this way. Let's say I took a flight to the middle of Iowa somewhere, got off the plane, and saw a view that looked something like this. A horizon line, a horizon, maybe some clouds, a sun, Now let's say I'm standing somewhere in the middle of the field, looking towards the horizon. So this is me. And now let's say I'm looking at a road going back in space. I look to my left and I notice that the side of the road starts wide and ends up narrowing and getting smaller towards the horizon. Then I look to the opposite side and I notice that the other side of the road goes in the same direction and that the sides of the road touch at the horizon line. This spot where the sides of the road touch is called a vanishing point. Usually abbreviated as VP. The horizon is called a horizon line. Often abbreviated as HL. This is called one point perspective. We have a single spot into which all depth recedes. So if I have another road over here, some kind of road that runs parallel to this one, a bike path let's say, the sides of the road are going to recede towards the same vanishing point. In one point perspective, all things recede to a single point. In one point perspective, we have three kinds of lines. If we have some kind of intersection in the road up ahead, a second road, the lines on that road are going to be perfectly horizontal. So those are horizontal lines. Let's say we have a series of telephone poles on this side. The lines on the telephone pole are going to be vertical. So we've got horizontal lines, we've got vertical lines, and then we have a third kind of line, and that's a line that goes back in space. So any line that recedes to the vanishing point, any line that is subject to the vanishing point is called an orthogonal line. In one point perspective, all horizontal lines, regardless of where they are, are going to be parallel to each other. They're never going to touch. So if we have another horizontal line, let's say another intersection here, that horizontal line is going to be parallel to these horizontal lines. If we have a second vertical line, let's say a second telephone pole going back in space here, the vertical lines on the second telephone pole are going to be parallel to the first telephone pole. So one thing I'm doing right now is I'm actually figuring out what the height of the second telephone pole, which is one of the things I'm able to achieve using linear perspective. So what is perspective useful for? Well, quite a few things. Anytime I need to draw architecture, anytime I need to draw receding space, I need to have a good understanding of linear perspective to do that. Uh, what else is it good for? Well, just about everything is subject to perspective. Uh, the human body, uh, animals, trees, even. So uh, this is something we need to learn how to do really well before we're really competent as draftsmen. So um, let's see what this looks like in actual practice. But before we do that, let's talk about what supplies you need. Uh, I'm working with a fountain pen. This is my favorite fountain pen here. But I want you guys to work with your graphite pencils, preferably your HB 
pencils. You can work a little bit harder. Don't go softer than HB. Make sure these pencils are sharpened really well. Um, this pencil is inside a pencil holder, pencil extender. In case you're curious, you can also use a mechanical pencil. Uh, just make sure it has a thin lead, so a 0.5 or a 0.7 uh, would be really effective. <coughs> what else? Well, a ruler would help. In fact, not just help, but be absolutely necessary. Um, you want a long ruler at least 36 inches, if you can. And these clear plastic rulers are really good for this. You also need a right angle. Right angle looks like this. Right angle is used to get perfectly vertical and horizontal lines. You absolutely need this because uh, if, let's say, you accidentally draw your horizon tipped or a vertical line also kind of leaning a little bit, it's a little bit like math. Uh, you create inaccuracies which over time create more and more and more problems. Uh, what else? You need erasers, your X-Acto knife, and then I want all of you guys to work on an 18 by 24 drawing pad. Work in your big pad. So, guys, uh, this tutorial, this series of tutorials, they're going to be intense. They're going to be very heavy on information. As you're watching the tutorials, make sure you're taking notes. Make sure you're drawing along. Make sure you're stopping and reviewing the material. Um, because uh, this is going to probably take more than one viewing of the tutorial to, to actually get. Um, so be patient with yourself. It's a lot of information. Uh, hopefully there will be opportunities for you guys to email me, ask questions during our Q&A sessions. Most importantly guys, stay focused, watch the entire tutorial. So I don't want half viewing or skimming. Um, you're going to miss a lot of information. Okay, so let's move forward to drawing an interior using one point perspective.